Let's talk about the power of Moshe Rabbeinu. So we mentioned yesterday there's a cosmic battle happening between Yaakov and Esav, and they're fighting over who's going to have spiritual power and dominion over the 12 months of the year. And that's very significant because whoever has spiritual power and dominance during those months, there'll be a sort of advantage. And that's why we said that the months of Nisan, Iyar, Sivan, those are filled with holidays, those are filled with Geshmaka Pesach, Reb Shimon, Kabbalah Satayra, and Tishrei, Cheshvin, Kislev is filled with Yom Nerayim, Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, Seres Mechuva, Sukkis, Shmini Atzeres, amazing days. Chanukah. And we know that Esav got the other months. But because Yaakov Avinu grabbed onto Esav's heel, he stole back one month. He stole back the month of Yud. That was the Yud Ekev. He grabbed the Yud. That was Elul. Because he wanted to make sure that Klal Yisra had a month of Tshuva before Shoshana. But it meant that all the other months of the year were under the dominion of Esav. Harasha. And in Cain, what about Adar? I thought Adar is the happiest month of the year. It sounds like Adar's a... Adar's... A good month. In fact, we know it is. It's the best month to do all sorts of things. You have business ventures, get involved. Get going in other. That's a very good time to start a new business, start uh, making moves. Other is a very auspicious time. It's a good time to get married. I got married in other. It's a, it's a very happy time of year. So it sounds like it was by ace of what happened. So we said, Haman threw the poor. The poor is the lottery. Remember, Haman wanted to destroy the entire Jewish people. That's right, boo. Thank you. In my show, we just, we just stomp our feet. Or like, the Ben Yishchai was, by the way, wasn't into like long things. I know here in Eshet people get you know, into it. Just make sure you don't miss any words. Because then you're not Yoitzi in the Megillah. But you can make a... I generally make a stomp. Um, Okay, air horns are not the best idea. They usually go with bad things. Usually, someone's got air horns, especially in a, in, in a, in a shul, you know, with other people there, that could cre create loud uh, sound, God forbid, law lenu, hearing issues for people that's by their ear. I'm just cautious of these types of things for people. Graggers? Gra Graggers are good, yeah, Graggers are good. Graggers aren't that loud, you know. Nowadays, you know, like laser graggers and sound boxes and stuff. Just, you know, old school wooden gragger or stomping the feet is a big thing. Uh, be careful of talking in the middle because you're in the middle of the reading the Megillah. You don't want any one of these, like, like Haman, I hate that guy. You know, it's always like at the end, like, I was like, boom, I hate that guy. You're in the middle of the Megillah. You know, you're talking in the middle of the Megillah. Not a good idea. You want to be Yotzi every single one of the words. And uh, therefore, you know, friends take care of friends. If you see an air horn, confiscate it. <laughs> you know, take care of your fellow, fellow brother. Tell him that uh, stomping is, uh, is just fine. So Haman, and we said before that Haman, the letters of Haman, Haman's an interesting. If you spell out each of the letters, right, the hey, how do you spell out a hey? Is a hey, is it a hey, and a hey? And a mem, mem is a mem, mem, mem. And nun, nun is nun, nun. So Haman, there's a Haman, the original, the OG Haman. And then the Svarim say there's a Haman in every generation. He's like, he's a mere image of Haman. Until we do tshuva, so there's always going to be this sadly, this energy in the world that we have, to, we have to stand up to and condemn, that's the, you know, the Hitler energy, the Haman of the destruction, and we have to reject that. How do we reject that? Number one, to say that it's not right, it's not true, and two, that we have to continue to be the light and hold on to Torah and mitzvahs. If we hold on, to true Torah and mitzvahs, we hold on to being 
people of kindness and giving and love and compassion and helping and being fanatics for loving kindness. To be a fanatic to, I'll just tell you, it's amazing. We just had a baby boy, Baal Hashem, Mazel Tov. I, I, I can't even tell you the amount of food from the neighbors, from our entire community. Like the entire community, the Rebetzins like mobilized their forces and they just, it was like, to say a train of food is, is, is lacking. It was like, you know, fighter jets just like coming at our front door, just massive food, tons of stuff. <coughs> People ordering us, endless. We were packed with gourmet dinners. It's amazing. Just tons of overwhelming things. Why? Because somebody had a baby. We have to help them. We have to help them. It's not so easy to do stuff, you know, stuff. It's a lot when you have kids. It's a lot. It's a lot of work. So, oh, we want to make it easier for them. So we're just, we're not, we're not thinking like, did you need something? We just send. Because the Jewish people were, were crazy about helping. We love helping people. And if we step up to that more, the Haman of the world will vanish. If we step up and just help and more and more and more and more help. That's very, very, that, that is the tikkun. So Haman saw that this was going to be a, a good time because his lottery came out in which month? Adar. Adar, and that was by Esav. And he knew that Moshe Rabbeinu, we said, died in the month of Adar. Now, what does it mean that Moshe Rabbeinu died? So it means that he died on the seventh day of Adar. Do you know where he died? you know where he's buried? Nobody <coughs> knows. So it says, <laughs> He was buried in a valley on the other side of the Jordan, just over there. We're sitting here in Yushalayim. We're pointing across the Dead Sea right now. That's Avra Yarden. And Moshe Rabbeinu is there. So the Sfarim say a few things. They say, one, he's buried in a place called Gai. Gai means lower down. Meaning you could find him if you go and become a person who's lower down. You could find him if you're a person that's not uh, <coughs> haughty and, and arrogant. You'll find Moshe Rabbeinu if you go to the guy, if you go down into the valley. So Haman got very excited though. He said that the power of Moshe has, is leaving the world now. This is the month of Adar. There's only one thing that he didn't know. He didn't know that Moshe Rabbeinu was also born in Adar. So you might think that what that means, oh, Moshe Rabbeinu was born 120 years before that, before his death, and therefore, it's true he died, but he was born 120 years. I want to tell you a secret. Moshe Rabbeinu, when it means that he was also born in Adar, it doesn't only mean that he was born 120 years before that. It means as soon as he died, he was born. Where was he born? He was born in every single one of the souls of Klal Yisrael. The second that he died, he was born inside of us. And that's what the Zohar says, Ispash, Ispashtusa <coughs> That the powers of Moshe show up in every single generation, essentially forever. And if you learn enough Gemara, you all of a sudden will encounter some interesting Shaklavataria where Rava and Abaya will be having a machloikis, and Rava will say something, and Abaya will say something, and then Abaya will say, you know, Shapir Ka'amras Moshe. You know, Moshe, that was a good pshat you said. Um, my name is Rabba, my name is Abaya. I'm not sure, you know, I'm not Moshe, you know, maybe it's Purim or something you didn't get, like I'm, I'm not Moshe. So the answer is, is that in every single Yid, in every single Talmud Chacham especially, is the soul of Moshe Rabbeinu is planted inside of us. And therefore, when you attach yourself to Torah, like right now, this is literally what we're doing right now, we're attaching ourselves to Torah's Moshe, you can have a revelation of the soul of Moshe more and more and more and more. And big, big tzaddikim have like crazy levels of revelation of Moshe Rabbeinu inside of them. So Haman didn't know that as soon as Moshe Rabbeinu died, he was born inside of us. So that meant that 
there was a power of Moshe that he thought was leaving the world. But really the power of Moshe Rabbeinu was becoming more integrated in the world. Now, do you know what's interesting? Coming up later in a few parishes, is Kiseitze, uh, no, Kisavoy, Kisisa, excuse me, where, the, where Moshe Rabbeinu says where the golden calf happens. Remember that? Not a good incident. And what does Moshe Rabbeinu say inside that parasha? He says, Mecheni na misifracha. Erase me from your book. He says, if you want to, because Hashem was very upset, Hashem wasn't actually upset, He was showing upset because we weren't going the way that He would want. Just like a father has to show his son discipline. If he doesn't, it's not good. There's no, there's no education there. But the father can't be angry. It is to show, and that takes a lot of work, it's to show that something is not okay. So Hashem was showing a certain anger, and Hashem said to Moshe, I would erase everything and restart with you. Similar to the flood. I'll erase everything. And what did Moshe Rabbeinu say at that moment? He said, if you want to erase, Klaliso, erase me too. Erase me too. Erase me from your book. I'm so one with the Jewish people. I'm so deeply connected into the souls of the Jewish people. Because when I die, I'm going to be born. That if they're gone, I'm also gone. Now, by the way, just as a side point, that we know that Moshe Rabbeinu was also a reincarnation of Noyach. It's a good thing to know. Keep that one in your back pocket. Of Noah. Oh yeah. He in the Zoyar, in the Arizal, in Shara Gilgulim. There's good stuff over there. That's you know for the advanced studies. So Moshe Rabbeinu is a spark of the reincarnation of the soul of Noah. And what do we know about Noah? That the Torah in a certain way, blames Noyach. The prophets call the flood May Noyach, the, fl- the waters of Noach. Why was it somehow blamed on Noyach? Because he didn't, kiruv. he didn't do enough Kirov. How many years was he building the ark, Rabbi Yisai? 120. 120 years, Noyach is building an ark. Why did he build it for 120 years? No, no, why did Hashem, why did Hashem ask? To, to, to give people does. 120 years that, like, uh, no, what are you doing? Um, you know, the world has spiraled into debauchery, excuse my French, into horrible things, and we need to steer humanity back on course, and if we don't, there's going to be a flood. So they would ask him, like, so what are you doing? Like, you're building this ark for 120 years? Not one person was Noach able to tell them and convince them that this will save you. You should change your ways. Remember, the context of Noach was Noach was in an era where there was tremendous, sadly, arias. There was bestiality. There was humans and animals mixing together. There was a lot of there was thievery also. And they were, there was thievery with like, they would do it in order to subvert the justice, meaning that if you steal less than a penny or less than the smallest amount of money, you can't take somebody to court for that amount of theft. So if everybody just kept stealing, this is what's happening in California now. It's not a felony if it's under $999,000. dollars It's something like that, like $800, yeah. $900. So, yeah, so a, thousand, at least for a thousand is a felony, but less than a thousand is not a felony, which means it's basically... Okay. Okay, and we're not going to charge you for it, and no one's going to put you through the courts. Yeah, which means people are going in. It's horrible. Places are going out of business. People are walking in there with with garbage bags. And I don't think these are fake videos. I don't think this is like you know psyops. There's tons of just just like what are they doing? People are just throwing like Gillette razors, which is an of rice, anyways, into their into their shopping bags and just walking out. And nobody's doing anything. It's becoming normalized theft. This is what was happening in the times of the Mabel. In the times of the Mabel, because it was, a, it was under the rule of the law. 
It wasn't, the rule of the law didn't deal with things under that amount. Yeah, but if every single person goes into, I don't know, CVS, wherever they're going, and they close down branches, they can't, <coughs> you can't steal people's stuff and expect to continue being in business. So if everybody goes in and steals less than $1,000, uh, How many that, people go in? It's like $100,000. So, yeah, so that's basically called the times of the flood. That's the times of the flood. And therefore, people started going out of business because, oh, you can't take me to court. I only stole less than a... That's crazy. So this was the times of Noach. So Noach is building this ark for 120 years. And he wasn't able to have one person change his ways. The Sfarim point out that Noach really didn't believe that people could change. Therefore, he didn't really daven for them. He basically thought, Hashem told me to make the I will. Like, you ask me what I'm doing, I'm making an ark. Hashem said he's going to destroy the world. But he wasn't really believing in people. And that's why we don't come from Noyach, we come from Avram Avinu. Because Avram Avinu is the exact opposite. What does Avram Avinu do? He goes to Sadoim, who are the biggest lowlifes and Rishoyim and the, the most evil people in the world, and he starts praying for them. That's our great, 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 great grandfather. The Jewish people, that's the way we live. Even the worst of the worst. The people of Sadoim, maybe, maybe there's a redeeming quality. Maybe we can help them. So Noach didn't do that. Avraham prayed for people. He becomes the first Jew. Comes Moshe Rabbeinu. Moshe Rabbeinu says, you want to destroy the world? You want like a flood part two, even though it wouldn't be a flood because Hashem said he wouldn't do it as a flood, but a, some type of destruction. Like of the world? or Of the world, of the world. Oh. And then restart with Moshe Rabbeinu. All human population or just the Jewish nation? Everyone. And restart with Moshe Rabbeinu. But Hashem promised no, that he wouldn't. Through a flood. Only through a, sh- like literally through a flood. Yeah. You could do like volcanoes or something. Uh, Lola, 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 Lola. I'll let you guys think of all the different, you know, a- apocalyptic <laughs> scenarios. Yeah, <laughs> Lola, Lola. Okay. <laughs> we should not know such things. You guys watch too many movies. Okay. <laughs> so. So, like that Will Smith one. I Am Legend or something? Like Zombie World? We'll restart with Will Smith or something? La Havdil? So, La Havdil. So, Hashem says to Moshe Rabbeinu, Mecheni na misiflecha. It says, if Klal Yisrael is going to be erased, I am so one with them, I'm so integrated with them, erase me also. And when he said those words, Mecheni, what word, what letters do you see in that? Mecheni? Mecheni, erase me, is the same letters as? Mei Noyach, the waters of Noyach. And at that moment when he said, Mecheni, I'm so deeply connected to Klal Yisrael, that is who I am. Mecheni, he fixed that Noach wasn't able to reach out and wasn't able to be that deeply connected to humanity. Wow. Moshe Rabbeinu was the ultimate connection to humanity and Noach was the ultimate connection to Hashem, but he lacked the connection to humanity. So like the tikkun for so Noach. The tika, so yeah, so, the tikkun. Yeah. So Noah's neshama comes back into the world in the body of Moshe Rabbeinu and does that tikkun. It's like the, the ultimate teshuva. And this crazy teshuva, right? Think about that. That's tshuva that took how many years? 13 generations. I think, or 16 generations. We're talking like 1,000 years. There's a tshuva like on mega, mega levels. Okay, it's important just to know that, to think about that. But Haman, so he didn't know this. Haman just knew that Adar was by Esav. And therefore, others are going to be good. He didn't know, though, that Moshe Rabbeinu was also born inside of Kalal Yisrael. But I'll tell you one more thing. When Moshe Rabbeinu said, Mecheni, Chazal say, when a tzaddik utters a word, that has to come true. When a tzaddik says something, even if the tanai, even if the condition is not met, the tzaddik's words are very, very powerful. We see this by Yaakov and Rachel. When he said, wherever the trophim are, 
the idols of Lavan, the person should be, and the Rachel ended up, because Yaakov's words were very, very powerful. So in Moshe Rabbeinu said, Necheni, there needed to be some erasing of Moshe, because he said, he said erase. So what is unique is that the Torah, from the first time that Moshe Rabbeinu's name is mentioned in the Torah, until the end of the Torah, his name is mentioned in every single parsha. Except for the one. That. Except for one. Except for one. So in Parsha's Kisisa, he says, erase me. So Hashem goes through the entire Torah. <laughs> next Parsha, I don't want to erase you. Next Parsha, I don't want to erase you. Next, 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 goes through the entire Torah. What's the Parsha right before Kisisa? Is Titzave, where the entire Parsha doesn't mention Moshe Rabbeinu's name once. Which means Hashem waited, he kept pushing off, I don't want to race you, I don't want to race you. He goes through the entire Torah, wraps all the way around, until the Parsha before, which is coming up in a couple weeks, the Parsha before Kisisa, which is Titzave, and it only says Ve'ata, Titzave, and you. So what happened? Did Moshe Rabbeinu become erased? No, the answer is Moshe Rabbeinu integrated into all of us. That's what Titzava is. Mecheni means don't erase. It means integrate me. And that's why nobody knows where he is. Because he, he's in all of us. He died and was born on the same day. He went inside of us. You can't find, you know, Moshe Rabbeinu. He's in all of us. And whenever you connect the Torah, you're connecting to a very, very powerful light of Moshe Rabbeinu. You'll find them, like we said, in the guy. If you go into that deep, deep valley inside of yourself, you're going to see a Moshe Rabbeinu is like the superstar of Purim. According to the opinion that Moshe Rabbeinu was not born with a bris milah, when is Moshe Rabbeinu's bris? Purim. Purim. Is on Purim. He's born on the seventh of Adar. The eighth day is Purim, which is the full revelation of Moshe Rabbeinu. Purim is going to be the day of Adeloyada. You get to a place beyond Das. Usually Moshe Rabbeinu is Das. But you get to Adeloya, that you go all the way up. But Moshe Rabbeinu is just integrated inside of us. That's very, very powerful stuff. So Haman didn't really hap what was happening here. He knew some of it, but he didn't know the extent of what he was dealing with. We're going to be going on to not only did he not understand the extent of what, we're, that he, what he was dealing with, Adar had in it the most powerful atomic energy of tshuva, that it seemed like the worst month, what he thought was the time of Moshe Rabbeinu's death, i.e. when salvation leaves the world. The Moshe and Shal Yisrael leaves the world, the Mashiach is dead. Then they used to have t-shirts like that, God is dead. It was not a thing. It's like a fel- You're based on Nietzsche. Yeah, God is dead, period. I think I remember growing up, there's like people in school, like these like black shirts, white, God is dead, period. So that's Haman. Haman wanted to say that it's all Mikra. And he thought Moshe Rabbeinu is done. There's, there's no more salvation. What he failed to realize is hidden in Adar is going to be the greatest. La Yehudim Aysa Oyer V'Simcha V'Sosim V'Kar. B'zrat Hashem, we're going to explode next time into what Adar is all about. The Oyeris of Adar. And what Haman didn't understand and what we have to tap into now to make sure that the Haman in every generation doesn't uh, do all of his plans. That Besiat Deshaim, we're going to see Oira, we're going to see great light and great salvation. La Yehuda Maisa, Oira Vesimcha Vesos, and Vikar Kain Tiyelanu. Amen. Kol Tuv.